wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. Thank you for joining us tonight for another Faith University Bible study. Uh, tonight we continue with our new series, Who is Jesus to You? This is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter number 1. Tonight we'll be looking at verses 40 through 51. The Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verses 40 through 51. Let us pray. God bless us as only you can. We thank you for another opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for the way you love us. Thank you for how you forgive us for our many sins. Thank you for yet another chance to make our wrongs right. Now, Lord Jesus, speak to us by your Holy Spirit. Heal us where we hurt. Strengthen us, Lord. Save as only you can. Thank you for opening doors that no man can close and closing doors that no man can open. Bless us and make us a blessing. In Jesus to Christ we pray. Amen. Tonight's lesson from this theme, Who is Jesus to You, is simply come and see. Uh, this lesson will teach us much about how we can go about the business of witnessing to others, how we might witness to people in our family, how we might witness to a friend, how to approach this whole business of evangelism, how we can advance the kingdom of Jesus to Christ just one life at a time. The memory verse is verse 43. Let me read that in your hearing. The Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse 43. There are two words I really want us to remember, but let me read the whole verse. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, follow me. It should be easy to remember two words, follow me, meaning Follow Jesus. Become a disciple of his. Learn of his will and his way. Learn who he is. And then learn what he would do. And then be obedient at following him. Come and see is the lesson for tonight. The key thought is that Jesus wants people to follow him in faith and in truth. He wants us to follow him in faith and in truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father, he declares, except by him. So Jesus wants people to follow him in faith and in truth. So let's look at the lesson tonight. Here's something to think about as we get started. Promises, <laughs> promises promises. Uh, most people are skeptical about promises that they hear made by different individuals. Most people tend to be even skeptical about promises made by people who are close to them. That might be because of some past experience. I don't know. Good question to think about is how quick are you to follow others? Why? Why are you quick to follow? Why are you slow to follow? What types of people will you follow? How can a person's past experience get in the way of following Jesus to Christ? Think about it. In this particular context, we, we hear the writer John really declare the deity of Jesus. Remember, he said in verse number one, chapter one, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. John writes and talks about how he is that light that came into the world and darkness couldn't overcome it. He talks about how this word was made flesh and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 
Now, when we continue in chapter number one in the Gospel of John, we see uh, the forerunner, John the Baptist. Some would call him John the Baptizer because he baptized believers in water. He said, hey, there's one coming after me. I'm not even worthy to unloose his shoes. I baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with fire and the Holy Ghost. When we come to verse number 29, it says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. We know he submitted. He said, suffer it to be uh, that you go ahead and baptize me, John. When he was baptized, um, we see where John bear record in verse 32 saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode on him. They heard a voice. This is my son in whom I will please. Now, when you come down to verse number 35, it takes us towards our lesson that we'll pick up on verse 40 through 51. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, behold, the Lamb of God. Uh, John is speaking to his disciples. He had a following. He told them, behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. He transferred his influence he had as a leader and introduced them to the Lamb of God. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and said unto them, What seek ye? And they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwelleth thou? And he said unto them, come and see. Uh, That's the theme for tonight's lesson. You're going to hear it again later on. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the 10th hour. That would equate to about 4 o'clock p.m. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. This is verse number 40, where we pick up our lesson. I want you to think about witnessing. I want you to think about how to evangelize. I want you to see how we can learn from what Jesus and John the Baptist did. And I want you to notice what the early disciples did also as they told others about the good news. When we take a look at verses 40 through 42... I want you to focus on Peter and Andrew. Andrew and Peter. Notice verse 40. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard John, John the Baptist, and followed him. He first found his own brother, Simon, who we know as Peter, And told him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. Remember, we're focusing on Jesus' deity. Remember that uh, we want you to understand who he is um, at this proclamation by the Gospel of John. John declares that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That Jesus is equal to God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. And we know God the Son, Jesus the Christ. So uh, he's calling him the Messiah, which means the Christ or the anointed one. He is the anointed one for what? To be the savior of all mankind. He is the Messiah, the anointed one, the one who's been called. Uh, He is God himself, uh, wrapped up in human flesh, who has come down through 42 generations so we can behold his glory as the only begotten of the Father, the one who is the perfect Lamb of God, who will die on a cross so wicked men and women, boys and girls, can have faith in him 
and come out of the darkness and into the marvelous light. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard John and followed him and followed him. That's the work of a disciple, to follow Jesus. He first found his own brother. Notice that he went to his brother. This gives us some insight about how we're to take the gospel throughout the world. Once you understand who Jesus the Christ is, once you have an encounter with him, once you are saved and sealed by his Holy Spirit, uh, once you are set free, once you are liberated from sin and from bondage and from addictions, and, and you know that you know that you know God has smiled on you and joy floods your heart, you can't help but burn with wanting to share the good news with someone. And here, Andrew, one of the early disciples, wanted to share the news with his brother, someone in his family. And he told him who he was to him, who is Jesus to you. Uh, Andrew said, hey, listen, Peter, listen, Simon, we have found the Messiah, which in, is interpreted the Christ. And he brought Simon to Jesus. Notice he told him about Jesus, and then he t went a step further. He, he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus saw him, he said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. He gives him, really, a new identity. <laughs> and, and everybody who is saved is given a new identity in Christ. Why? Because we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. We have a different identity. We were in Satan's family on our way to a devil's hell, but once we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, we become members of God's family, members of the Most High God. Uh, we, we, we are changed in the twinkling of an eye. We're sealed with His Holy Spirit. Uh, we have a purpose. Uh, we're different because of our salvation. So when Jesus saw him, he said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. Peter, this word being translated means really a stone or rock. He has new purpose in life now. He comes alive in Christ Jesus. You know, later on, we'll learn how, how Peter declared when Jesus asked him, whom do you say I am? And he had that anointed profession that you are Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. And so that's what we all have to do. Lord have mercy. Once you believe and you have the conviction about who Jesus the Christ is, then you share your conviction with someone else. And you have to leave it up to the Holy Spirit to move upon their heart. You have to leave God's work to God. And when God works on a heart, uh, those individuals, whether they're family members or friends, they have to make their own profession of faith in Jesus the Christ. So let's continue with the lesson. So when you look at verses 40 through 42... I want you to notice Andrew and Peter, underscore their names, read what happened to them, meditate on it, and let God reveal further to you about how you can be a witness for his glory. Now let's look at verses 43 through 46, and I want you to write down Philip, and I want you to notice what Philip did. So we had Andrew, even though Peter was the most dominant personality, and we're going to read more about Peter, and we know Peter's impact on advancing the kingdom of God. And maybe this is what God is saying, is that even though it would look in our eyes that uh, Andrew was the smaller fish and Peter was the big fish, what I know about fishing is that small fish can catch big fish. So I don't know if the Lord is saying to us, don't be concerned about how little you might look in your own eyes or how little the world may uh, perceive you to be 
as a Christian, as a child of the Most High God. Just do the Lord's work. Just tell about the goodness of Jesus. Tell about what he did for you and who he is to you. And then let God do the rest. Verse 43, underscore the name Philip. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. He found Philip and told him, follow me. Man, that's my testimony. I'm sure that's yours too. Wherever you were, God came to you by his Holy Spirit through someone. I don't care where you were. You could have been at a ball game. You, you could have been at school. You could have been in your bathroom. You could have been down the corner around the street somewhere where you shouldn't have been. You, you could have been in a, a club. It doesn't matter where you were. God so loved the world that he sought you out. He, he, saw, he found, he, he went to Philip and told him, follow me. And he's saying that to people all over this world today. He's coming to them right where they are and saying, follow me. Man, who wouldn't serve a God like that? Now, Philip was from Bethsaida. Um, that's a place where they're known for fishing. It means, this word, the house of fish or the house of fishermen. Quite apropos for what God wanted to do through Jesus, through his early disciples. He said, come and follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. There are people out there who need to hear the good news. There are people who are in darkness. There are people caught up in addictions. There are people in bondage. God wants us to work with him to set the captives free. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathaniel. Now, the Lord, notice what happens here. He, he goes to Philip and told Philip to follow him. Now, Philip goes to Nathaniel, who is a friend, not a brother per se, not a family member, but, but a friend, and told him, we have found, notice what he says, the one Moses wrote about in the law. And so did the prophets. Lord, he's, he's helping us to understand who Jesus is. He's helping us to understand his deity, that he just didn't come on the scene in Bethlehem in a manger. No, he's the one that Moses wrote about in the law. And he's the one that the prophets talked about coming, the one who would be the savior of all mankind, the one who would be a light to Gentiles. Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Right? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nathaniel, Nathaniel asked him, Lord, listen to what the Lord said. Listen to what the Lord said through Philip. Come and see, Philip answered. Let me go over that one more time. I don't want you to miss it. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathaniel, his friend, and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and so did the prophets. Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. He was telling him who he is. And so we see somewhat of a different response from his friend. He didn't immediately follow Jesus uh, like it's inferred that Philip did. He had this question. He said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? When he told him who he was. And notice he connects him to Joseph, uh, Mary's husband, Jesus is really stepfather because we know God the Father is the only true father of Jesus the Christ. So Nathaniel asked him this question, can anything good come out of Nashville? Can anything good come out of Elizabethtown, North Carolina? 
Can anything good come out of West Charlotte? Can anything good come from where you come from? People will want to know these questions. And here's a great response by Philip. He didn't debate with him. I've just found now, maybe you have too, that debating with people about who Jesus is rarely works. It's a work that God has to do in their hearts, but you are charged by God to be a witness, to be a witness in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. You're, you're called to be a witness when power come upon you. He said, you shall be a witness of mine. So you have to witness. He said, go ye therefore and make disciples throughout the world. You got to go. And the beginning process of making disciples would be praying and going and, and then witnessing. And here's the response that, that Philip gave to his friend. And maybe this is the response we need to give to our friends when we get a little pushback, when we tell them who Jesus is to us. Just simply come and see. <laughs> and that's easy, isn't it? Come and see. Uh, follow me to prayer meeting. Come and see. Come to my own little personal devotion time. Come walk with me through the scriptures. Come and see. Come and go with me as we do ministry in the neighborhoods and you will see who he is. Come uh, to church where Jesus is Lord and Jesus is taught and preached and, and sung about and celebrated. Come and see for yourself who he is. For the same way he revealed himself to us, we have the confidence that he will reveal himself to others in his own way and his own time. Now, as we take a look at verses 47 through 51, I want you to underscore the name Nathaniel. And I want you to watch what happens in his life. Notice what Jesus does. Notice Nathaniel's reaction. Then Jesus saw Nathaniel coming toward him and said about him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit or no guile, some translations will say. So Jesus sees him and he discerns who he is on the inside and tells him about himself. How do you know me, Nathaniel asked. And this is Jesus' response. Uh, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You, Jesus is something. He's showing you his deity. He, he's showing you his um, omnipresence. He, he, he's showing you his omniscience, that he's all-knowing. Uh, he, he's showing you that he's really all-powerful, that he is God wrapped up in the flesh. He is the word in the flesh. And when he said these things to Nathaniel, it broke him down and he replied, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. This is not before he called him rabbi, which means master. Isn't that something? You see how Nathaniel went from being a skeptic to calling him master? In essence, calling him Lord, calling him the son of God, understanding his deity, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, the king of Israel. That wasn't because... His friend, Philip, debated with him about who he was. It wasn't because um, Philip tried to make him feel bad about being a sinner. No, it, it wasn't because Philip uh, tried to pretend to be holier than thou. He simply said, hey, come and see. And Jesus did the rest. I don't know. What happened under that fig tree? I don't know how far away the fig tree was when Jesus saw him where he was. But Jesus knew that that was something that was intimate to Nathaniel and that it would mean something to him that only God could have revealed. 
He said, I, I saw you before Philip even called you, before Philip even told you about me, I, I saw you under that fig tree. Some would suggest that maybe he was under the fig tree praying. I don't know what he was doing under the fig tree, but whatever it was, <laughs> you know, I don't know what Jesus saw him doing, but he saw him doing it and he told him about himself and he said, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Listen to Jesus now. Jesus responded to him. Do you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. Then he said, truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the son of God. He said, you're going to see greater things than this. You, you, this, I know this is powerful to you. I know this was enough to reveal to you who I am, but there are greater things to come. The best is still yet to come. See, I believe that he saw Jesus after he was resurrected. In Acts 1-9, he was more than likely there when Jesus ascended into the heaven. And as one of the early apostles, surely he saw many of the amazing miracles that were performed. He saw power like never before that only a God could do who sent down power from heaven. So who is Jesus to you? This lesson is about how to evangelize, how to be a good witness. Come and see. Tell your family members about Jesus. Tell them to come and see. Uh, tell your friends about Jesus. Tell them, come and see. Uh, uh, tell uh, the, those in your neighborhood, those in Judea, in the surrounding area where you live, come and see. Those on your job, those you see in the highways, in the byways, in the shopping malls, wherever you see them. Tell the Samaritans, those who are, are different from you, who have different um, habits than yours, different customs. Uh, from yours, live differently from you. Tell them, come and see. Tell everybody, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is what I want us to consider for our challenge with this lesson. Consider what our lives say about who Jesus is to us, when people see our witness, when people see the way we live, the way we talk, the things we do, the things we don't do, what does our lives say about who Jesus is to us? Here's the second thing I want us to consider. Consider adopting a come and see witnessing attitude. It takes the pressure off of you. You don't, have to, you don't have to be an intellectual. You, you don't have to be holier than thou. You don't have to know all of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. All you can do with confidence and the strongest conviction is to tell somebody who Jesus is to you by talking about what he's done for you and then tell them, come and see. And then finally tonight, I want us to pray for God's anointing his courage and wisdom that are necessary for effective evangelism. Do the work of an evangelist. Be a witness as we have been called to be a witness, as we have been called to be disciples of the Most High God. So pray for his anointing to come upon us, a new, a fresh anointing that would give us the courage and wisdom that are necessary for effective evangelism. Let us pray. God, we love you and we bless your name. Forgive us for the times when you nudged us to witness and we did not. We pray now, Lord Jesus, for a fresh anointing that you would open our eyes to see what you're doing in the lives of others. Give us wisdom, give us courage. Give us that anointing, Lord. We know our words mean nothing. But give us your words 
with your anointing that will break the yokes, that will set the captives free, that will share properly your love for mankind, that will draw men and women, boys and girls, out of the darkness and into the marvelous light. We thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for saving us. Save others. In Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight, my friend. Remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you. As we continue in worship this morning, let us think about the sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf. Let us worship him even the more in spirit and in truth as we partake in the Lord's Supper. I read in your hearing this morning from 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, beginning at verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened. Of the Lord, that we should not be condemned, that we should not be condemned, that we should not be condemned with the world. When you think about the Lord's Supper, even right now, think.